Here's your attention getter for the day, my little pupper. This is my big baby, Sola. Ow. Her nails are kind of sharp. Okay, now I'm going to put you down. Hello everyone! Welcome to the third episode of The Passion Project. Today I'm going to be talking about how I, a naturally shy individual, a lot of people don't believe me when I tell them that I'm shy. I hide it very well because I'm mostly extroverted. Today I'm going to be talking about how I, a naturally shy individual who would rather paper cut their eyeballs than speak in front of a large group of people, motivated myself to sign up for, practice, compete in, and win an impromptu speaking competition. Now before I get into it, if you haven't already, like this video, subscribe to my channel, and give me a comment on what you think of today's episode. Now let's go. What in the world motivated me to want to do this to myself? Something that terrified me. There were three things. At the time, I was challenging myself to step out of my comfort zone, so this was a great way to do that. I also had an aha moment when I had to introduce a speaker at my summer internship. I kind of felt like a rush of excitement, and I thought, maybe I want to try public speaking. And the third reason was I just wanted to prove to myself that I could do it. So once I decided that I wanted to be good at public speaking, I decided I'd sign up for the regional impromptu speaking competition through my business fraternity, Pi Sigma Epsilon. Shout out to my fellow members if you're watching. So the first thing you have to understand is that an impromptu speaking competition is not just any speaking competition. Instead of having time to prepare a speech and practice it and perfect it, you show up, you're given a prompt, and you have 30 minutes to write and prepare a three to five minute speech, and then you go in front of a big crowd of people and you give your speech. The thought of it used to make me want to pass out. If someone would have told me a year ago that I was gonna do this, I would have, I would, no, I would have been like, no, you're insane, you're crazy, I would never, I'm too shy. So once I was signed up and committed to competing in the competition, I decided that I decided that it was going to be my primary focus for the next month. And I did two things to prepare. Number one, I decided mentally, no matter how nervous I got, I was not going to tell myself or anyone I talked to that I was nervous. And every day I would write down, I am a public speaker, I am not shy, and I am confident to mentally prepare myself for the competition. Number two, I practiced my ass off. I knew this skill did not come to me naturally and I'm very competitive. So to do so, I first met with a faculty advisor from PSC, Professor Blay. Shout out Professor Blay. She was an awesome coach. So we sat down, she gave me some resources to look into, different ways to practice, links to previous winners, etc. So I started by watching some TED Talks and analyzing what made them good. I also watched Toastmaster videos that explain things like body language, engaging the audience, and voice inflections. I also memorized the structure of a speech, the hook, the thesis, the three main points, a summary, and a closing. So I could quickly organize the speech and my thoughts. So next, I put what I learned into action. So I printed out 100 impromptu speaking topics. I cut them up and I put them in a little bag and then I committed to practicing at least once a day for about two weeks. I ended up some days practicing two to three times. And each time I would mimic the scenario, I'd give myself 30 minutes to write it, I would record myself giving the speech and then I'd critique myself. I would also practice in front of small groups of PSC members um, and anyone who's willing to watch me. You can really tell when you look back on the videos and my progression that I got better throughout each video. Let me show you those. Mass production has created this problem in that the quality of... Fast forward to this year and I decided to work on the same project, project for the same company. We decided it would work better if I could work from home and simply 
commute virtually. All these years that I've been on Teams, there is something essential that I've learned. And that is Teams endure a variety of hardships and victories together. I believe that people on a, who have been on sports teams have a particular advantage in teamwork because you learn a lot from being on a team at a young age. Three people that everyone in this crowd will know failed, failed to epic proportions. Now, at first, I want everybody to raise their hand if you've ever had a terrible experience with a company, but it can surprisingly be used as an advantage. The way that it can be used as an advantage is by learning from your dissatisfied customers and never letting a number or a person's opinion get in the way of your success or determine your future. If Michael Jordan would have listened to his high school coach telling him he wasn't good enough to be on the team, he probably would have never been in the NBA and been known as the best basketball player in the world. On a basketball team, you have your point guard, you have your shooter, and you have your post. In the workplace, you have someone who's really good at social media marketing, and then you have your designer who's an expert at creating and the artsy side of everything. And then maybe you have your communicator, your team lead, who's good at facilitating everybody. Specialties are what make teams more effective. Looking back on the videos, you can really tell how I got better from like the first to the last. Um, but as you can see, I practiced a lot. So by the time the speaking competition came, I felt confident, I felt prepared, and also probably the most nervous I've ever felt. So I got to the competition, I got my topic, and the topic was, what is your personal mission statement? So I grabbed that, um, Professor Blay and I ran to our hotel room, and we got to work. It was game time, baby! I wrote my speech in about 15 minutes and I practiced for like 10 minutes. I collected myself for like five minutes before walking in the room in front of about 60 plus people to give the speech. So if you haven't seen it yet, here's how it turned out. This is Adam Smith and I'm representing Kent State University. So much like an enterprise in high school and in any company, they live, they work by a mission statement. And I like to live my life by the same rules. I want to start off by sharing a story. My freshman year, I decided to go to Kent State University. I made the hard decision not to play a collegiate sport. And after one semester, I realized that there was a little bit of a void in my life. I felt like something was missing. I missed sports, and I missed a competitive environment. So I talked to my roommate. We actually played on a basketball team together before. We decided we were going to start the first women's club basketball team at Kent State University. So we figured out what we had to talk to. We had to go through a bunch of different people to figure out who that finally was. And we sent them an email of our intentions to start the team. I got an email back, and I literally almost worked for work to quote me this good luck. Last time I failed miserably. So we took this as a challenge. And we decided that we were going to start the club, and we were going to be successful at it. My mission is to live my life with intention and on my own terms, and to inspire others to do the same. Now, raise your hand if you have a passion. Just about everybody in the room. Now, I want you to take a second and think about what that passion is. Get it in your head, one or two words. Does everybody have something, something in mind? And I see some nods? Good. Now, with this in the back of your mind, I'm going to tell you three things that you can do with this to help you live your life with intention and on your own terms. Number one, don't let anyone tell you you can't pursue your passion. Whatever lights your heart on fire, what inspires you to wake up in the morning, don't let anyone tell you you can't do that. If we would have listened 
to the club sports director and say, good luck. It failed miserably last time. Where would we be today? There wouldn't be a women's club basketball team in Kansas City. Number two, give back to your community. By starting the team, you are able to create a team and a community for so many different girls and women at Kansas State. I wouldn't have met half my friends. I wouldn't know any of them. I was able to give back when we were able to provide something that didn't exist at Kansas State University. So much like Pies and Exxon and Enterprise, they like to give back to their communities as well. And this is something that's very important. And then finally, we are being very kind and gentle. When we were recruiting for the team, we made sure that it was clear what we were looking for. People who missed teamwork and missed competition in their lives. If you're kind and genuine in your life, people are going to be on your side. They're going to respect you and they're going to support your passion, your goals, what you're working towards. So I want to challenge each and every one of you in this room to pursue your passion. Pursue your goals that you set for yourself. Find something every day that you can do to get you one step closer to that goal. What sets your heart on fire. And by doing this, if I can inspire every one of you guys to do this, I will be able to say that I have achieved my mission and my fundamental purpose. When I tell you I've never felt so relieved in my life the second it ended, whew, but I felt this huge sense of accomplishment. I literally felt like I could do anything because I'd just done something that had you asked me to do one year ago, I probably would have said over my dead body. I didn't even care that if I won at that point. I was just so proud of myself for doing it and getting myself up there. Then the award ceremony came around and here's what happened. So I won, I got first place overall and I just, felt an overwhelming sense of feeling accomplished, feeling proud of myself, feeling like all my hard work paid off. So that is my experience with public speaking. And ever since, if I get nervous to speak in front of a group of people, whether it's small or big, I tell myself, are you freaking kidding me, Hallie? Uh, do you remember what you did? And then I feel more confident. So whether you're looking to do public speaking or just in general doing something that scares you, do it. I promise you, you will not regret it. It's seriously like a feeling like no other to do something that you thought you couldn't do. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and got something valuable from it. Again, leave your thoughts, comments, and questions down below. Like this video and please give me a subscribe to catch next week's episode of The Passion Project. I will see you all next week.